All right, mathletes, let's go ahead and start chapter seven. So section 7.1 and 7.2, I'm just gonna combine into one section, um, just because I think it flow, they flow rather nicely together. Uh, so instead of having uh, like an obvious break, um, these two sections we're just gonna do uh, just kind of all at once. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna be looking at uh, the inverse sine, cosine, and tangent functions. So let's uh, start by looking at the graph of y equals sine of x. So we have, uh, or at least a section of it from negative two pi to two pi printed out for you. Uh, so this should look really familiar. It's what we did in the last chapter. Uh, so let's a uh, answer some questions about it. So the first one uh, is the graph of y equals sine of x one to one. Well, that answer would be no. And why not? Well, if you remember, there's a way to tell if a function, uh, or if the, if the graph of a function uh, represents a one-to-one -one, uh, function, uh, that was a horizontal line test. So if you stuck a horizontal line on here, you're gonna intersect it like infinitely many times. So it is, sine of x is not one-to-one. Uh, -one. So if it doesn't have, if it's not one to one, does it have an inverse? Well, that answer would also be no, because that was the kind of the crux of it. Uh, in order to have an inverse, the function had to be uh, one to one. Well, in your last class in trig, like you worked with inverse sine, cosine, and tangent. Like we know they exist, so how is that possible? Um, so like, how do you have an inverse sine if you if we're saying no, it doesn't have one? Well. We can kind of sneak our way around it uh, if we restrict uh, the domain of sine. If we restrict it to uh, the closed interval from negative pi over 2, To pi over 2 so we're only going to look at this section of the curve so that's what this is right here so this is the graph of sine uh, with that new uh, restriction just negative pi over 2 uh, to pi over 2 so now it does definitely pass a horizontal horizontal line test <clears throat> okay so now draw the inverse which can be denoted as uh, and then there's two ways to denote it uh, one of them <coughs> excuse me is with that inverse sine notation <clears throat> sorry, the inverse function notation. So sine with that little negative one up in the exponent spot. Uh, or another way to say it is arc sine of x. Uh, so you can use either notation in the book. And I, uh, as well as any other instructor, is going to flip-flop between the two. Um, there's no one way to write it, so just pick your favorite. Uh, personally, I like this one better. It just sounds cooler. Uh, but... That one is faster to write, so there you go. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw, uh, or try to draw the inverse function. So to the, get the inverse, remember we can take coordinates and flip-flop the x and the y values. So negative pi over two, negative one, becomes negative one, negative pi over two. So that point would be right there. Zero, zero would remain the same, which is nice. And then this one would become one comma pi over two. So right there. And we want it to kind of have that same like sort of curvature th through it. So don't, we're not gonna connect it with a straight line. Uh, we got a curve our way through those points, just kind of like that. And so that is the graph of inverse sine. Uh, one thing to denote or to note uh, with the notation, uh, just because I see it happen uh, quite often, um, and that's dealing with this special inverse sine notation here. Um, and, you know, I still get people, even in calculus, uh, calculus two and three, like they just forget uh, this little negative one is not an exponent. It's the inverse notation, not an exponential notation. 
Um, so inverse sine of x is not the same thing as one over sine of x. That little negative one does not mean, hey, take the reciprocal. Um, it's the inverse, uh, it's the special inverse notation. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and stop uh, this video here, just a little intro, uh, and then we'll look at uh, the inverse cosine and tangent and stuff about their domains and ranges, and then start to actually evaluate them.